Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Isn't it great to be in church on a Wednesday night, right? Just to get refreshed and, uh, and get stirred up. How many have been here for the last, is it three weeks? How many weeks have we been doing at the table? Has it been two weeks? It feels like three weeks, huh? It feels like three weeks to me. But uh, have you guys been getting something out of that? And uh, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that we continue to really challenge each other, okay? And I'm saying challenge each other because I pray and hope that, that you know, you as a, as, a, uh, as a family of this church, that you also have a desire to challenge, you know, the leadership of our church, to challenge the pastors and that we're, we're dreaming together and that we're desiring to see God's vision come to pass because this is our church. It's your church. It's our church. It's Team Jesus. And... Um, one of the things that we love to see is people uh, continually grow in, in their spiritual gift, but not just their spiritual gift, but also to see them grow in their potential. And uh, every single one of you have amazing potential to, uh, to take your life to the next level. Everybody has an opportunity, every single one of us. The question is, is are you going to take that opportunity? Are you going to take that serious and say, you know what, I'm going to be intentional. Now, I'm not going to wait for somebody to tell me to do something, but I'm ready to step in to whatever it is that God is asking me to do, and I'm going to go with all my heart with it, regardless if I'm afraid of it, if I feel like I can't, or I, I feel like I just don't have what it takes. And just get over yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, get over yourself. Yeah, just get over you. Get over yourself. It's just, it's so overrated, isn't it? It's like, oh my gosh, don't you get tired of talking about yourself, right? Like, you just, it's kind of like, come on, be quiet. It's like, look at yourself in the mirror and be like, just shut up. Seriously, sometimes you got to tire yourself that. You got to, you have to quiet your, your thoughts. You got to quiet your soul because your soul can get in the way of what God wants to do in our life. And uh, we want to be spirit-led. When God gives us something, we, we take it and we run and we do and, uh, and that's what James talks about. There's the hearers and there's the doers. You know, I want to be a doer. I want to be a doer. And with that said, um, you know what? I'm super blessed to see my kids. My kids grew up in the church. And, um, you know, they slept on, on uh, church chairs all their, their childhood. And they were in church uh, sometimes six, seven days a week. Um, our kids uh, served alongside with us in any event we did whether it was inside the church outside the church they were just a part of everything we've done in ministry and to be able to see my children today at 24 and 20 and to see how God is using them it's there's no greater blessing to my wife and I than than to see our kids serving Jesus and we love that we thank God um, and as they keep growing older you know what there's nothing more greater in a father's heart and if you're a dad you, you'll you'll understand what I mean than to see your kid already flowing in their in their call, in their gift, in their in what God has placed inside of them. And so tonight, you know, it, uh, since we've been talking about moving chairs, right? And Isaac is someone that we know that God has called and put a mandate on him to do amazing things in the kingdom of God. Um, I asked him to come speak tonight and to share with us. And uh, so tonight, without further ado, I want you to help me give. A wonderful warm welcome to my son, Isaac Ruiz. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, Thank you. That. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, if you know me, I like to start off with a funny story. Um, I actually had to explain this story this week, but I thought I'd share it with you. So I used to sell phones, right? And one time this lady came in and she was like, hey, I really need a phone. And I was like, perfect. You know, this is my job. I was like, awesome. And then she's like, but it can't have any demonic numbers within the phone number. And I was like, okay. And then she's like, no, I'm serious. There's been trippy stuff happening this week. There can't be any demonic numbers. And I was like, okay. You know when they say, like, you should pray at work? At that moment in my head, I'm, like, speaking in tongues. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, and I'm ready to, like, I got her a phone and everything. And I'm calling to see what the number is. And it's 661. 666, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, I just hang up the phone and I compose myself because I'm not going to lose the sale, right? You know, I'm like, hey, that sucks for you in my head, but I'm, I'm going to get the sale. And then I was like, hey, ma'am, uh, 
uh, I got your phone ready, and she's like, okay, tell me the number. And I was like, uh, I was like, I think we should change the number before you hear it. Um, just, just tell me. And I was like, 661, 666. And then she's like, oh, my God. She started looking around the whole room, <laughs> all right? So did I. I'm like, because I'm thinking there's, like, a conspiracy going on. She's looking. I'm looking. You know, and then she's like, just give me the phone. And I'm like, do I got to run? Like, I give her the phone, and she's like, thank you. And then I never see her again. What does that have to do with this? Nothing. But it just tripped me out, and I thought you guys should know. I didn't want to be the only one. And I was the one manning that store that day, so there was no one to tell. So this is like the first time you're hearing it. So thank you for letting me get that off my chest. <laughs> um, but, you know, that lady was probably going through something, you know, really tough. But how many times have we all gone through something, Right? But I think one thing we don't really like to talk about is when we go through something, also our faith does as well. Like, there's us and then there's the spirit, right? And I think a lot of us don't really like to talk about it because it's uncomfortable. It really is. No one's like, hey, I'm struggling with my faith. You know, no one does that. But I'm going to be honest with you. Like, it's a you know, honor and a privilege to be up here, but I've struggled with my faith. I've had my doubts. I've had my fair share of doubts. Uh, my parents know I was like, you know, the difficult child. You know what I mean? They tell me, hey, Isaac, don't do this. I'm going to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the same thing with my faith, too. Like, they'd be like, hey, like, Isaac, we want you to do this. I'd do the opposite. And I would like, it was just a handful for them. But I think I've come to a place in my life where I've seen the beauties of, of Christianity and the and the beauties of the church. But also, I think we have all had a fair share of seeing the bad stuff too, feeling the bad stuff too. I mean, I've doubted God. I'm going to be real with you. Today when I was like, you know, I was preparing this whole week, but today I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, I hate what I wrote. Like, I was like, God, I think this wasn't you. And, you know, when that's, you know how scary that moment is when you're about to go up, though, and, like, you got to be confident? And I'm like, I'm not. And then Alexis was singing, Right, Alexis, you're an amazing sister, but she was singing, you know, about just like how we trust God and how we got to give it all to him. And that's what I'm going to speak about today. And I was like, God, thank you. Last second. Thank you for confirming. But hey, you're faithful. (laughs) But it can become difficult in life because sometimes we don't see it as God as being faithful. I, I can say this, like in the moments, like it's, it's cool talking, like God's faithful, believe in him, amen. But like when you're in it, you're like, God, where are you? And then he's like, that's all you hear, silence. And sometimes you're like, where is God? Like think about it. We're pretty awesome people when you're, when you're believing in Jesus because we're having faith in something we cannot see. And a belief in something that, you know, it's not like Jesus come down. He's like, hey, what's up? Like every once a month, you know, two times a week. Like, no, it takes incredible faith to believe in God. And sometimes that faith gets a little rocky. It's been rocky for me. Trust me, my faith has been tested. I've, I've gone through a lot of things. Being the pastor's kid, is, it's awesome. It's, it's, it's cool. You get great opportunities. You get to meet people. But, hey, I get to see a lot of people leave. I get a lot of friendships that I get. And then they fall through. But also, too, I have amazing, long-lasting friendships here. But still, a lot of those things can begin to rock you. Like, I've lost friends. People have gossiped about me. I've gotten threats. Dad, you know that's true. That's happened. I've, I've gotten really bad things, you know, and not just in church. Outside in school, I was made fun of being a Christian. Not even that. They just made fun of me. <laughs> I'm just that one guy in the room that, him, you know what I mean? <laughs> First day, um, yeah, I've, I've been through the ringer. It's not like I get the front row seat to Moses' beard where it's dripping down oil, and I'm like, thank you, God. No, it's not like that. It's not like that for anybody. It isn't. You're never, like, in that holy place, and you're good, and you're flying off in the distance. We've all been through the ringer. Financially, my family has been through it. You know, I remember when my dad sat us down, and he was like, hey, like, you know, I have good news, and I got, like, bad news, but good news. Right, and you know when my dad is like, "Good news!" Like, the, yeah, the other thing he's just trying to like really just pump up our faith, and he was just like, "You know, we're starting a church, but we may have to move in there. We may lose our home, but it's okay. We're gonna be together." I'm like, <laughs> "That saved it, right? We're gonna be together. You'll have upstairs. We'll get 
you know, the nursery. He's all the, here's the layout, you know. We'll paint it for you. <laughs> you know? We've been there. My parents, like, blew it all for the church. And I don't regret it, though. I bet they don't either. They don't regret it. But it's, it's rough. It is rough. You know, having to go to football sometimes, and then my mom was like, hey, do you think they can, like, give us a deal so that you can keep playing and make it cheaper? You know how embarrassing that is? Because they're giving everything to the call. It's hard when you're in high school and you got to hear that. And then I'm, like, talking to the coach, like, hey, like, but God is good. He was always faithful when it came to that. But I want to talk to you guys tonight about where the times we don't feel like God is, is faithful or when God is there. Because that's like the boogeyman that no one wants to talk about in the church. Oh, no, God's faithful, brother. Oh, brother, keep the faith. God is good. And, the, and you know they're going through it because, like, you saw them in the parking lot and they're like this. <laughs> it's true. None of us like to, to like, show for how it is. But if you know me, I'll keep it real with you. I'm not, I'm not doing good. No. But you can pray for me. I'll do that. Ask anybody. Felicia's usually the one uh, <laughs> that sees that. So it's true. I keep it real. But I think we all have to start keeping it real with God and ourselves, that we're not always on that high place with God. And I think a lot of the times we see the issue in front of us, and it scares us back, and we're questioning our faith. But the thing is, the beautiful thing about God is that he's willing to embrace that questioning. He's willing to embrace it. And, you know, we've been talking about the table, but you know how on Sundays the t- table looks really elegant? You got the bread, you know, the nice chair and everything. Sometimes I feel like God made a table for me, but it's like a, like a pop-up chair, leftovers from last night, plastic cup, you know. Come on down. I'm like, it's like cold the food you know what I mean that's how I feel sometimes when it comes to my faith I'm like yeah we're believing you know that God prepares a table for us but it doesn't always feel like that sometimes I feel like I'm preparing the table I'm getting like a plastic cover for it trying to make it look nice that's how it feels we've all been there don't lie you've been there Mm -hmm. I seen you guys coming to church I'm good brother no we've we've all been there where it doesn't feel like that and can we put up my scripture in revelations So it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. Sometimes I'm like, God, where are you at? I'm sitting at the table in faith. We're all standing in faith. And I'm like, God, where are you at? And I'm having dinner by myself. God, where are you? It feels like that. But the crazy thing about God is that whenever you feel like he's so far, I think he's he's paying attention the most. Because God, Jesus never promised us that he would end the pain. He would end the suffering, but he promised that we could get through it. I mean, he, look, he even prayed to God, take this cup of suffering away from me. If not, we going through with this. God wasn't like, yes, Jesus. No, he, he went through it and completed it until the end. And then he resurrected. So will us. So will you. So will I. But it's, it's getting to that place where we let God knock on those specific doors. You know, because in making this church and, and being up here, there's some things I don't want to give to God. Who's been there? You know, when they do those messages about change, give it all to God. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> where you don't want to give it to God? It's usually the areas where you're stressed out most about is the area you're really not giving that to God. If you take a step back. If you think about it, Every moment where I've been like, God, where are you? Come on. And then he's like, yeah, just give it to me. No. (laughs) My way. (laughs) Think about it. That's how it's been. Don't lie to yourself and be like, "Uh, I'm just praying and waiting on God, (laughs) hoping that he comes. No. no. It's like God's like, okay, give give it to me. He does the beautiful exchange, right? That's what he's known for, you know? And it's like, where did we go wrong? where we thought we could do it on our, by ourselves, on our own. And that's how most people are in the church. The ones you think that have it all together don't really have it all together. Those are the ones that are like holding on by like a finger to their faith. And that's been me. I've held them. My dad knows. Shoot, if, if they didn't help me through it, man, I could have gone atheist. For real. That's not even a joke. I'm the guy that like, likes to test his beliefs, and I need to make sure that I believe him for myself. I'm the guy's like, yes, Jesus. No, I need to see him. And I think that's how we should all be. He says, test me. 
God's open for it. He's willing to take it. You just got to be willing. So let me tell you guys a funny story. Um, so who wants a beautiful home? Who wants a beautiful home? Guys, can you put up my, my visuals of what I wish my home would look like? Dang! <laughs> Woo! Shoot! I'd never leave the house. I mean, who doesn't want a home like that? Right? All right, show the inside for him. I mean, this is MTV Cribs. All right, so this is what the inside of my home will look like. Um, I'll be chilling there, you know. It's beautiful. I got recreational, the movie theater, everything. You know, so our heart is like a beautiful home. I envision our heart like a mansion, right? So, because your heart has many doors. You have many emotions. So many doors. It's a big mansion. There's a lot that goes on in the heart, right? Correct? So I think God envisions our heart like a house. And so let's say you have this house. I have this house. Um, and one day I'm just chilling, right? And I'm, I'm, I wake up. I'm all good. I'm like, dang, got a mansion and everything. And I get a knock. And then I'm like, dang, like, who could that be? And I open it, and it's Jesus. It's Jesus, right? If that were you, would your mouth not drop? Because I'd be like, come on in. <laughs> I would... I would make a red carpet out of, like, paper. Like, <laughs> come on in. You know what I mean? I would let Jesus sit. I'm like, pick any room. It's yours. I, I give him my room, right? You have Jesus there. You Don't tell me you're going to be like, uh, um, yeah, you can take the guest room. Uh, there's something wrong with you. I'd be like, Jesus, take my room. All right, cool, right? And then I have Jesus. He's chilling in my room. You know, I'm just chilling like, oh, my God, I got God. Which one do I have, though? Because they're like all three in one. <laughs> so I got to give them three rooms, one room? I don't know how this works. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't tell me you wouldn't ask yourself that. It's like the Holy Spirit here, too? Like, and then you'd like, you're like in the middle of t- thinking about that. And then you like, oh, word must have gone out. <laughs> Jesus is here. Like, put on your best clothes on, right? Open the door. It's the devil. And he tries breaking in, right? He's like, oh, my God. You're like holding the door. Jesus. Jesus. Je-. And you're not seeing the door open where he's at. Jesus. And you're like fighting the devil, right? And you're like, oh, my God. Jesus. Can I say that? Is that saying the Lord's name in vain? He's here. You know, so you're like debating that. You're fighting off the devil. And then you finally get the door closed. Like, oh, my God. What the heck happened? And then you see Jesus walking down the stairs like in a robe. Goes to the fridge, pours himself some OJ. I'd be so pissed. I don't care. <laughs> Dude, what happened? What do you mean what happened? I was upstairs. What happened? What's up? The devil came, and I was fighting him trying to close the door. So what do you want me to do? Um, help me? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, I only have your room. Like, this house isn't mine. Fine. Take the hole upstairs, right? Take the hole upstairs, fine. All right, cool. And he goes back upstairs with his OJ. <laughs> That's how I see God. Me and God are chill like that. Um, and he's got that nice walk because he knows he's got it. I own this place. Uh, and then you go to bed that night and you're like really shook. I have Jesus in, this, in my house, and, but the devil still came. And you're like, you're shook. You didn't even sleep that night. You wake up the next day, and then you're like, it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day. All right, you know, you hear Jesus. He's on the treadmill upstairs. And like, okay, cool. He's up. All right, and then you hear, and then you're like, you look upstairs hoping. You still hear the treadmill. And you're like, all right, fine, I'm opening. Like, maybe it's the neighbor. It's not the devil. No, he wouldn't try twice. He's not dumb. Boom, it's the devil. And you're like, oh, my God, not again. God, Jesus, Lord, something. You start Jehovah Rapha. You know, you're calling him by his Hebrew names. You know, El Shaddai, Shalom, uh, Hanukkah, come. And you still hear, he's not, it just, it looked like the treadmill went faster, but he still didn't come downstairs. You get the door closed. Jesus. Then he's like, he's all sweaty. Yo, what's up? What happened? 
you're all seeing, right? Like, oh, did you just put that in there for fun? I, you should know. It was the devil. Isaac, yeah, what, what's the problem, though? Nothing happened, though, right? Can you handle this for me, God? Yeah, but I only have upstairs, though. All right. Yeah. All right, so I only have upstairs. And then you're like, okay. I'll give you every room but one, though. And we all have that one house. Uh, no, that one room in our house that you don't show to people when they come over because you know it's dirty. <laughs> you know. Like, hi, well, come on in. And then you, like, purposely block that door. <laughs> yeah, so go check. Look at our bathroom. We got a new tile. And, every, and you're still, like, you know, you're not showing that room off. Hey, what's that one? No, nothing. Let's go eat, you know. We all have that one room. We all have that one room, right? You don't want to give God that room because it's dirty. And that room symbolizes everything that you're not willing to give to God. That room symbolizes maybe the marital issue you're having. That, that, that room symbolizes that financial crisis that you're having. Maybe you're, not willing, you're not, maybe you're not able to pay the bills and you're not willing to tell anybody about it, right? And you're like, no, 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 not that room. You can have every room but that one, right? And then maybe it's that one room where it's your doubt with God, that you don't like telling people, that you just like hiding. And you're like, yes, brother, but you're doubting God. That's that one room. You know that one room for you. That one room that you're, that one thing that you're always stressed about, that's that one room. All right, so then the next day comes, and you're like, I gave God every freaking room except that one. So he better, like, at least, like, be like, yeah, what's up when I call his name? So then you go to the door again, and you hear the, and you already know, ready? Like, you already purposely wore, like, like a workout outfit because you know it was coming. <sighs> yeah, I'm used to this. Don't worry. <sighs> I'm used to being negative. I'm used to being attacked by the enemy. I'm used to just the daily routine of never getting help from God and me just praying to him. <sighs> all right. And he's all, like, extra today, the devil. <laughs> I know it's you right before you're about to open it. I know it's you. And then you just open the door, and he's like, you know what's about to happen. Yeah, yeah, all right. Let's just get this over with. Duh! And then, you know, because they're fighting. And then you just, you just stop calling Jesus at that point. But you're thinking in your head because he can read your thoughts. And you still don't hear anything. You're like, oh, my God. Ah. And you finally get it. And the devil's gone again. And then you, you don't even care for Jesus to get out of his room. You barge in there. Dude! Jesus! What the heck, man? Where you at? I gave you like every room. I gave you the cars. What else do you want? He's like, uh, I want that room. The messy one, specifically. I want that room. Then you're like, I didn't even clean it today though. <laughs> like I knew you were here, but I've, I've, I've been meaning to get to it. And that's how you are just with, with our own issues. You've been meaning to get to it. Oh, I'll talk about it in like, you know, Elevate Man. I'll talk about it then. <laughs> I got brave. We'll talk about it there. Brave women, you know, we'll talk about it. I'll talk about I'll get to it. You never will get to it on your own. Like, no. I remember growing up, like, my dad would be like, do homework. Wouldn't do homework. My dad's smarter, though. <laughs> do homework. Okay, let me see it. Mm. <laughs> but that's the same thing with, with, with Jesus and us. He's the father. He's going to commit to it. And, but you're nervous, though. Okay, this is still happening. You're like, shoot. <sighs> I don't want to give over those issues to you, God. I don't, I don't know if we can do this, Jesus, shalom, everything. I don't, I don't know if, I, I, don't know if we, I can do this. And he's like, don't worry about it. I'll clean it with you. All right, but you just got to give me the keys. You can live here for free, rent free. And you're like, but I bought this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you pay rent when it's under new management, <laughs> but not today. Yeah, I'm going to let you slide. <laughs> then you're like, <sighs> you're like, you're like holding the keys, but shaking. He's like, come on, bring it up. I can wait all day, eternity for that case. <laughs> But you know what? The funny thing is it's, it's actually true because some people wait years to even do it. Like, like, think about it now. Like, you're this age now. 
most people don't don't even give it to like they're on their deathbed. That's where most people die with their regret. And that's, I mean, it's never too late, but it was a lot of time that you could have already given those keys. And then you're like, you're like giving, you drop it in his hand. He's like, perfect, all right. Um, you're going to bunk on the couch tonight. Because <laughs> trust me, Jesus will teach you humility. When you give it to him, he will put you in those circumstances where you will learn. But trust me, you get the rooms gradually. Oh, he gives you the master bedroom, but he's going to teach you. Right? So you're laying down the night. You're like, oh, my God. Does that mean I can't drive the cars? <laughs> but the bends, though. <laughs> All right. You know, and you're sleeping. And then you wake up and you're, oh, I'm ready. Oh, you had the clothes already laid out right beside you when you slept. <laughs> okay. Go to the blender, make yourself a shake. Oh, it's going down. It's going down. Like, you got that face already? Right? And then you're just going to look through the peephole in the door. And then Jesus comes, hey, that's not your issue no more. Opens the door, and the devil's like, ooh, I got the wrong house. Walks away. And then... But here's the best part. Remember that table that used to be rinky-dinky? He's like, he closes the door. He's like, hey, I made breakfast. Let's go sit. And then you're like, okay. <laughs> you like steak and eggs, right? That's how, that's how Jesus is when you let him take control of the heart. That's what happens when you let go of that door. Trust me, me, me speaking up here today was letting go of that door that I was afraid. A lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. Well, I had, to, I had to do it right before I came up here. There's never one time in your life where you already let go of all the doors. Because as you get older and life goes on, there's more doors. The house just gets bigger. Jesus always reconstructs, but you know what? Sometimes you always like to take back a room. But you never let, you never let yourself do that. When you're fully committed and when you give God all, that's when he owns the house. Can we put up my scripture, my other one? It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That is a promise, not a suggestion. And when you give God that door, I promise you, he will intervene. He's not going to end the whole pain. But trust me, the devil's going to have to rewrite a new plan. Because it's not going to work anymore. That's why the devil walked away from the house. Oh, shoot, got the wrong house. Oh, trust me, he's going to try to cross the gate. But good thing that, you know, God's got an alarm system. <laughs> and here are some good alarm systems that you should have in your life. Let's pull up my first point. Accept your reality. We've all been in a nasty place. Maybe you're in a nasty place. You've got to stop pretending that it's not there. God is always a God who loves when you come to the reality of where you're at because that's where he works best. Okay, so accept your reality. Number two. Get accountability. You need to. Because we're never meant to go through anything alone. The banana that leaves the bunch gets eaten. <laughs> it does. Think about it. You know when you see that single banana in the store because you don't want to pay for the whole bushel? <laughs> don't lie. <laughs> you know you've done that. <laughs> it's true. Because no one likes to buy a bushel. No one will attack you when you're in a group, really. Because then you can overpower, especially when you got Jesus in the middle. Because it says, you know, in the multitude of the brethren, he's there. Yeah. So it's like you got a posse just full of believers. Then you got Jesus just in the back. That one quiet dude that you know that, that will mess anybody up, that's him. Get accountability. Find somebody. But talk. Make yourself uncomfortable. That's where God works best, in your uncom uncomfortability. So... Jesus isn't like, you know, he's not the one that lets you, like, put on the slippers all the time. He's like, all right, put them work boots on, you know. So point number three, serve others. It's so true. We can be so much about ourselves where all we talk about is ourselves. Oh, my God, I'm going through this, brother. I'm just going through this, 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 this. And they're like, oh, my God, like, I'm here for you. Thanks. And then you walk away. What about them? People, and then you're wondering why you're losing friendships. Because you're all about you. Yes, you're going through the ringer, but that doesn't mean you become selfish and you just become all about you. 
it, it legit says in the Bible most of the time when, when you're going through hell, once you start pouring into other people, he pours into you. It's a system where everybody helps each other out. That's why you get accountability, and then that's when you start serving others because it's just a system where God continually keeps pouring into you, and when you feel like you're out of, out of gas, that's when God does the refuel. He changes the tires, and he gives you a bomb house. So I'm believing, guys, you know, if you see that house ever, just let me know the address because I just saw it online. Um, I'm using God's credit card. <laughs> but put up the scripture again where it says, he knocks at the door of your heart. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and, and eat with him and he with me. I want you guys to just walk away with this. That Jesus will always be a gentleman. And he'll always knock. But let's just take a moment just to listen. To just hear his knock. And you'll know his knock. Because it wasn't like the devil that was all extra. You know? Jesus was like that. You know, that cute little knot? That's, that's Jesus. And you know it. And you feel that tug. And you know you need to let go of things. But he's never going to force you into it. And I'm not even going to force you into it. And I'm just trying to, to, to just let you know, like, we're all in this together. I'm going through it too. I, I need to let God into some of my doors still. But we can do this together as a family united in Christ. And this is how I keep myself accountable. Even with, these, with this honor and this privilege, talking to you guys is keeping myself accountable because I will not let myself go back from what I've said. And I know because it's what Jesus has given us, not me, us, that we can do this, that we can let God into our, into our lives. And then he will come and make a bomb feast for us. He prepares a table. He makes all things new. So just let him in today. Amen. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.